The Bucolics of Publius Virgilius Maro. Eclogue 1. Melibius. Titirus? Titirus. You, recumbent beneath the shade of a spreading beech, meditate your rustic muse on a slender pipe. We abandon the boundaries of our country, and our pleasant fields, we fly our country, you, O Titirus, at ease in the shade, teach the woods to resound fair Amaryllis. O Melibius, God has granted this leisure to us, for he shall be ever a god to me, often a tender lamb, from our sheepfolds, shall stain his altar. He permits my heifers to wander. As you see, and myself to play what I will, on my rural reed. Indeed I do not envy you, I wonder rather, there is trouble thus far in all the fields on every side. Lo I, sick, drive my kids far off, O Titurus, even scarcely do I lead this, for just now yeaning twins, the hope of the flock, here among the thick hazels, alas! She left them on the naked rock. I remember the oaks, struck from heaven, often foretold this misfortune to us, if my mind had not been foolish. Often the unlucky crow foretold it from the excavated oak. But yet, O Titurus, tell us, who this god may be. O Melibius, I foolish have fought the city, which they call Rome, like to this of ours whither we shepherds often are accustomed to drive the tender offspring of our sheep. Thus I have known whelps like to dogs, thus kids like to their mothers, thus I was accustomed to compare great things with small. But this city has raised her head among other cities as much as the cypresses used to do among the slender shrubbery. And what has been to you so great a cause of seeing Rome? Liberty, which though late, it looked back on me inactive, after my whiter beard fell on me shaving, yet she regarded me, and came a long time after, since Amaryllis holds us, Galatea has left us. For, while Galatea held me, for I will confess it, there was neither hope of liberty nor care of my stock. Although many a victim departed from his folds, and rich cheese was pressed for the ungrateful city, my right hand never returned to me home heavy with money. Amaryllis, I wondered why you mournfully invoked the gods, to whom you suffered the apples to hang on their own tree. Titurus was absent from hence, O Titurus, the pines themselves invoked thee, the fountains themselves, these groves themselves invoked thee. What could I do? Neither was it permitted me to depart from slavery, nor to know so favoring gods elsewhere. O Melibius, here I have seen that youth, for whom our altars smoke twice six days yearly. Here he first gave a reply to me entreating, Boys, feed your heifers, as before, compel your bulls to labor. Happy old man, therefore your field shall remain, and extensive enough for you, although the naked stone, and marsh covets all your pastures with slimy bulrush, unusual food shall not injure your heavy teeming ewes, nor dire contagion of the neighboring flock shall hurl them. Happy old man, here amid the well-known streams, and sacred fountains, you shall enjoy the shady cold. Here a hedge. Which? From the neighboring path. Overfeed upon us to the flower of the willow by high blean bees. Often shall persuade you to go to sleep by its gentle whispering. Here the pruner shall sing to the skies, beneath a lofty rock. Yet in the meantime neither shall the horse wood doves. Your cure, nor the turtle shall cease to coo from the airy elm. Sooner therefore swift stags shall feed upon air, and the sea shall leave the fish naked on the shore. Sooner, either the Parthian exile shall drink the sown, or Germany the Tigris, the boundaries of both being wandered over, than his countenance shall glide from my breast. But we hence, shall go some to the thirsty Africans, a part will come to Scythia and the swift oaks of Crete, and the Britons entirely separated from the whole globe. Lo, ever beholding again shall I admire my native boundaries a long time after, and the roof of my poor cottage covered. With turf, standing behind some cars of corn, my own kingdoms? Shall a wicked soldier possess these so highly cultivated newly ploughed fields? A barbarian these cornfields? Lo, whither has discord led my wretched countrymen? Lo, for whom have we sown our fields? O Melibius, now engraft your pear trees, place your vines in order. Go, go my goats, formerly a happy flock. I, reclined within a verdant grotto, shall not behold you hereafter hang afar off from the bushy rock. May sing no songs, O ye goats, ye shall not crop the flowery citrus and bitter willows, while I am feeding you. Here nevertheless you can rest this night with me upon the verdant leaves. There are to us mellow apples, soft chestnuts, and plenty of pressed milk. And now the highest tops of the villas are far off smoke, and the larger shades fall from the high mountains. Eclogue 2. Alexis? The shepherd Corridon ardently loved the beautiful Alexis, the darling of his master. 
nor had he anything he could hope for. Only he came continually among the thick beaches having shady tops, there alone he threw away these unstudied complaints to the mountains and the woods with vain regard, O oh, cruel Alexis, you care nothing for my songs, you do not pity me, finally you will compel me to die. Now, also, the flocks enjoy the shade and cold. Now even the brambles conceal the green lizards, and Thestylus pounds garlic and thyme, sweet-smelling herbs, for the reapers weary with swift descending heat. But, whilst I survey your footsteps, the groves resound with horse grasshoppers with me beneath the burning sun. Was it not better to endure the cruel anger of Amaryllis, and her proud disdain? Was it not better to endure Manalka's? Although he was black, although you are fair O oh beauteous boy, do not trust too much to complexion. White private fall. Black hyacinths are gathered. I am despised by you. O oh Alexis, nor do you inquire who I may be. How rich in the snowy flock. How abundant in milk. My thousand lambs wander upon the Sicilian mountains. New milk is wanting to me not in summer, nor in the cold of winter. I sing, what Decian Amphion was accustomed to sing upon Actio Aracynthus, if at any time he called together his herds. Nor am I so deformed. Lately upon the shore I beheld myself, when the sea stood peaceful by the winds. I will not fear darkness, you being judge, if my likeness never shall deceive me. Oh at length will it please you to inhabit with me the dirty fields and humble cottages, and to pierce the stags, and to drive together a flock of kids with a green bulrush. You shall imitate Pan in singing together with me in the woods. Pan first taught to unite many reeds with wax, Pan provides for sheep, and the masters of sheep. Nor let it ashamed you to have worn your lip with the reed. What did Amintas not accomplish that he might know these same things? There is to me a pipe joined with seven unequal reeds, which Demeter's formerly has given to me as a gift, and dying said, Now this has you for its second owner, Demeter's said, Foolish Amintas envied me. Besides two little goats found by me nor in a safe veil, even now their skins being sprinkled with white. They drain two udders of a sheep in a day, which I keep for you. Long since Thestylus prays to take them from me, and let her do it, since my gifts disgust you. Come hither, O oh beautiful boy, behold the nymphs bear lilies to you in full baskets, fair Nais, plucking pale violets and the highest poppies for you, she joins the narcissus and the flower of the sweet-smelling anise. Then interweaving cassia and other sweet herbs, she paints soft hyacinths with yellow marigold. I myself will gather hoary apples with tender down, and chestnuts, which my amaryllis loved. I will add waxen plums, and honour shall be to this fruit also, and I will pluck you, O ye laurels, and thee, O myrtle, nearest, since thus disposed you mingle your sweet odours. Corridon, you are a clown, nor does Alexis care for your gifts, nor would Lola's yield. If you should contend with gifts. Alas, what have I wished for myself wretched? Lost man I have let loose the south wind among the flowers, and the boars to the liquid fountains. Alas, mad man! Whom do you fly? The gods even, and Trojan Paris have inhabited the woods. Let Minerva herself inhabit towers which she has built, the woods please us before all things. The stern lioness pursues the wolf, the wolf himself the goat, the wanton goat follows the flowering citizus, Corridon pursues you. O oh, Alexis his own pleasure draws aside each one. See, the bullocks bring bark the ploughs hanging from the yoke, and the sun withdrawing redoubles the increasing shades, yet love burns me. For what limit is there to love? Alas, Corridon, Corridon. What madness possesses you? There is to you an unpruned vine upon the leafy elm. But do you rather prepare to interweave something at least, the utility of which is required of vines and soft bulrush? You shall find another Alexis, if this one scorns you. Eclogue 3. Monarchus. Dauletas. Polymon. O Demeters, tell me whose is this flock? Whether Melibius's? No, but Aegon's. Aegon delivered it to me lately. O sheep. Always an unhappy flock. Whilst he cherishes Neria, and fears lest she should prefer me to him, here a strange keeper milks the sheep twice in an hour and nourishment is withdrawn from the flock, and milk from the lambs. Yet remember these things are to be charged to men more cautiously. And we have known who betrayed you, the goats gazing obliquely end in what chapel, but the gentle nymphs laughed. I believe it, then, when they beheld me cut down the grove of Mycon, and the new vines with a mischievous sickle. 
or here by the ancient beaches, when you broke the bow and reeds of Daphnis, which you, O Moros Manalcas, when you saw them presented to the boy, you both grieved, and would have died if you had not injured him in some way. What will masters do, when thieves dare such things? Have I not seen you, most felonious wretch, seize the goat of Damon by stratagem, the mongrel barking much? And when I cried out, whither now does he snatch himself? O Titirus! Collect your flock, you lay hid behind sedges. Whether shall not he, overcome and singing, restore to me the goat, which my pipe may have deserved by its songs? If you know it not, this goat has been mine, and Damon himself confessed it to me, but be denied that he was able to repay it. You conquer him in singing? Or ever has there been to you a pipe united with wax? Were not you, ignorant dunce, accustomed to torture a wretched song on a creaking straw in the crossroads? Are you willing, therefore, in turn that we try among ourselves what each can do? I pledge this heifer, lest perhaps you may refuse, twice she comes to the milk pail, she feeds two offspring with her udder, do you say, with what pledge you will contend with me? I do not dare to pledge anything from the flock with you for there is to me a father at home, there is an unjust stepmother and twice in the day both count the flock and one the kids. But, since it pleases you to be mad, I will pledge this. Which you yourself shall confess greater, be Chen Bowles, the wrought work of the divine Alcimedon, to which a slender vine, added by a skillful turner, dex clusters overspread with the pale ivy. In the midst are two statues. Conan, and who was the other, he who described the whole globe to the nations with a wand, what seasons the reaper, what the bending plowman should have. Nor yet have I moved my lips to them, but I keep them preserved. And the same Alcimedon made two bowls for us, and he embraced the handles around with the soft bear's foot, and he placed Orpheus in the midst, and the woods following. Nor yet have I moved my lips to them, but I keep them stored up. If you will look at the calf, there is nothing for which you should praise the bowls. By no means shall you fly me today, I will come wherever you shall call, only even let him who comes attend to this controversy. See here, is Polemon, I will cause that you shall not provoke any one with your voice hereafter. But come on, if you have anything, there shall not be any delay in me, nor do I avoid anyone. Only, neighbor Polemon, do you lay up these things in your inmost senses, the affair is not small. Say, since we have sat down upon the soft grass, and now every field, now every tree produces, now the woods put forth leaves, now the year is most fair. Begin, Demetas, you afterwards follow, O Manalcas. You shall sing in alternate verse, the muses love alternate verses. Ye muses, our beginning is from Jove, all things are full of Jove, he cultivates the earth, my songs are his care. And Apollo loves me, there are, for Apollo, ever with me his own gifts, laurels, and the sweetly blushing hyacinth. Galatea, a wanton maid, strikes me with an apple, and flies to the willows, and desires that she be seen first. But my flame Amintas offers himself to me willingly, so that not even Delia is more known to our dogs. Gifts are provided for my love for I have noted the place, where the airy wood doves have built their nests. I have sent ten golden apples to my boy, plucked from the wild tree, what I could do, I have done, tomorrow I will send others. Oh how often, and what things Galatea has spoken to us! Ye winds, bear back some part to the ears of the gods. What does it profit, O oh, Amintas, that you do not despise me in your mind, if I keep the nets, while you pursue the boars? Iola! Send Phyllis to me, it is my birthday. When I shall make sacrifice, with a heifer, for the fruits, do you come? O oh, Lolas, I love Phyllis before others, for she wept when I departed, and said, O oh, fair youth, farewell for a long time, farewell. The wolf is a sad thing to the stables, showers to the ripe fruits winds to trees, the anger of Amaryllis to us. Moisture is a pleasant thing to corn planted, the strawberry tree to the weaned kids, the slender willow to the teeming flock, a mint is alone to me. Pollio loves my news, although she be rustic. Ye muses, feed a heifer for your reader. He who loves thee, O Pollio, let him arrive where he rejoices that you have reached. Also, may honey flow to him, and may the rough bramble produce spikenard. He who does not hate Bavius, shall love thy verses, O Mevius, and the same shall yoke foxes, and shall milk he goats. O boys, who gather flowers, and strawberries growing on the ground, fly from hence, a cold snake lies hid in the grass. Ye sheep, cease to proceed too far, it is not well trusting to the bank, even the ram himself now dries his fleece. O Tidarus, drive back the feeding goats from the river, I, will wash them all in the fountain, when it shall be time. 
Ye boys, collect your sheep, if the heat shall have dried up the milk as it did lately, in vain shall we press the udders with our hands. Alas! How lean my bowl is in the rich field the same love as destruction to the flock. And to the master of the flock. Truly neither love is the cause to them of leanness, scarcely they bang together by their bones, I know not what I bewitches my tender lambs. Say, in what lands, the space of heaven spreads out three L's, and no more, and you shall be a great Apollo to me. Say, in what lands flowers grow, having written on them the names of kings, and alone possess Phyllis. It is not our office to settle so great controversies among you, and you are worthy of the heifer, and he, and whosoever either has feared pleasant or experienced bitter loves. Now, boys, shut up the rivers, the meadows have drunk enough. Eclogue 4 Ye Sicilian muses, let us sing in strains a little more exalted groves, and humble tamarisks, do not delight all. If we sing of woods, let the woods be worthy of a consul. Now the last age of the Cumean song has arrived, a great order of ages arises anew. And now the virgin returns, Saturn's kingdoms return, now a new race is sent down from high heaven. Do you now, O chaste Lucina, favor the infant boy, by whom the iron age first shall end, and the golden age shall arise through the whole world, now your own Apollo reigns. And thus this glory of the age shall enter. You, O Pollio, you being consul, and the great months shall begin to advance. You being chief, if any marks of our crime shall remain, rendered vain, they shall free the earth from perpetual fear. He shall receive the life of gods, and shall behold heroes mingled with gods, and he shall be seen by them, and he shall rule the peaceful globe by his father's virtues. But the earth first shall pour out her offerings to you. O oh boy, with no cultivation wandering ivy everywhere with ladies' glove, and shall produce Egyptian beans, mingled with smiling acanthus, the goats themselves shall bring home their udders swelled out with milk, nor shall the herds fear the great lions. Cradles themselves shall pour forth pleasant flowers to you. And the serpent shall die. And the deceiving herb of poison shall die. A Syrian spikenard shall grow everywhere, but as soon as you can now read the praises of heroes, and the deeds of your father and know what virtue is. The plain shall grow yellow by degrees with the soft ears of corn. And the blushing grape shall hang on the rude brambles, and the hardy oak shall perspire dewy honey. Yet a few footsteps of ancient fraud shall survive, which shall lead men to explore the sea in ships, which shall induce them to surround towns with walls, which shall command them to cleave furrows in the earth. Then shall there be another Typhes, and another Argo, which shall transport chosen heroes, also other wars shall be and great Achilles shall be sent again to Troy. Hence, when now confirmed age shall have made you a man, and the sailor himself shall withdraw from the sea, nor shall the marine boat exchange merchandise, every land shall produce everything. Nor shall the ground endure harrows. Nor the vineyard the sickle, now also the strong plowman shall loosen the yokes from the bulls. Nor shall we learn to counterfeit various colours, but the ram, himself, in the meadows shall exchange his fleece now with the sweetly blushing purple, now with yellow dye. Crimson shall clothe the feeding lamb spontaneously. The fates, harmonious in the firm will of the destinies, have said to their spindles, let these ages run on. O bright offspring of gods, great descendant of Jupiter, approach thy great dignities, now the time has arrived. Behold the world with its vaulted weight nodding, and the lands, and the regions of the sea, and exalted heaven, behold, how all things rejoice in the age about to come. Oh that the last part of so long a life would remain to me, and breath, as much as will be enough to sing your deeds. Not any one shall excel me in songs, neither Thracian or Pleus, nor Linus, although his mother, Calliopeia, shall assist him Orpheus. And his father, fair Apollo, shall aid him Linus. If even Pan should contend with me, Arcadia being judge, also Pan shall declare himself conquered, Arcadia being judge. Little boy, begin to know your mother by her smile, ten months have brought long-continued pains on your mother. Begin, little boy, on whom your parents have not smiled, nor a god honoured him with his table, nor a goddess honoured him with her bed. Eclogue 5. Monalchus. Mopsus. O Mopsus, since we have assembled, both good men, you to blow the light reeds, I to sing verses, why do we not it sit down here among the elms mingled with hazels? You are the elder, it is right for me to obey you, O Manalkas, either beneath the uncertain shades, the west winds moving, or rather we enter the grotto. See, how the rural wild vine sprinkles the cave with scattered clusters. In our mountains Amintas alone shall contend with you. 
What if the same should strive to excel Apollo in singing? O oh, Mopsus, first begin, if you have either any flames of Phyllis, or praises of Alcan, or quarrels of Codrus, begin. Titurus shall keep the feeding kids. Nay, I will try these songs which I have written lately on the green bark of the beech tree, and tuning I have noted them by turns, afterwards you command that Amentus should contend. As much as the slender willow yields to the pale olive, as much as the lowly lavender to the crimson rose beds, so much Amintas yields to you in my judgment. But, oh boy, do you cease to utter more, we have entered the grotto the nymphs mourned Dophis destroyed by cruel death. You, ye hazels, and ye streams, are witnesses to the nymphs, when the mother embracing the wretched body of her son, she calls both the gods and the stars cruel. O Daphnis, not any swains drove their fed ox into the cool streams on those days, no quadruped neither tasted the stream, nor touched a blade of grass. O Daphnis, both the savage mountains and the woods speak, also the Carthaginian lions mourned your death. Daphius likewise taught to join Armenian tigers to the chariot, Daphnis taught to lead out dances to Bacchus, and to intertwine slender spears with soft leaves. As the vine is the glory to the trees, as the grapes to the vines, so the bulls are to the flocks, as the corn to the rich fields, so you are all the glory of your friends. After the fates bore you off, pales herself, and Apollo himself left the fields. Often, in the furrows to which we have committed the largo barley, unhappy darnel, and barren oats prevail. Instead of the soft violet. Instead of the purple narcissus. The thistle and thorn rises with sharp prickles. Ye shepherds, spread the ground with leaves lead on the shades to the fountain, Daphnis commands such things to be done for him. And make a tomb, and super add a verse to the tomb, I, Daphnis. Known among the woods, hence even to the stars, the keeper of a fair flock, myself more fair. O divine poet, your song is such to us, a sleep to the wearied upon the grass, as in the heat to extinguish thirst from a springing rivulet of sweet water. Nor do you equal your master with the reeds only, but with the voice. Happy boy, now you will be another, from him. Nevertheless, we will sing these our verses for you in turn, and we will extol your daphness to the stars, we will raise daphness to the stars. Daphness loved us also. Whether can there be anything greater to us than such a favor? And the boy himself was worthy to be sung, and long since Stimakin had praised these songs to us. Daphness, in white, admires the unaccustomed court of heaven and beholds the clouds and the stars beneath his feet. Therefore joyous pleasure holds the woods and other fields, and Pan, and the shepherds, and the dryad maids. Nor does the wolf meditate snares against the flock, nor do any nets meditate fraud to the stags, good Daphnis loves retirement. The unshorn mountains themselves throw their voices to the stars with joy, now the rock themselves re-echo these songs, the groves themselves resound the manalkas, a god, this is a god. O oh, be thou good and happy to your friends. Lo for altars, Behold two for you, O Daphnis, and two altars for Apollo, I will place two bowls foaming with new milk yearly, and two goblets of rich oil for you and especially enlivening the feasts with much wine, before the half. If it shall be winter, if harvest, in the shade, I will pour out our vision wine, new nectar, in baskets. Demeters and Lixion Agen shall sing to me. Alphesibius shall imitate the dancing satyrs. These ever shall be thine, both when we offer up our annual vows to the nymphs, and when we survey the fields. While the boar shall love the heights of the mountain, while the fish shall love the rivers, and while bees shall feed upon time, while the grass, hoppers on dew, forever your honour, and your name, and praises shall remain. The farmers shall pay their vows to you yearly thus, as to Bacchus and to Ceres, you also shall compel them to their vows. What, what gifts shall I pay to you for such a song? For neither do the whispers of the approaching south wind delight me so much, nor the shores struck by the billow so delight me nor the rivers which run among the rocky valleys. We will present thee first with this brittle reed. This has taught us, Corridon loved the beautiful Alexis, this same has taught us, whose flock is this? Whether is it the flock of Melibius? But O Manalkas, do you take your crook? Beautiful with equal knots, and with brass. Which Antigenes did not obtain when often he entreated me for it, and then he was worthy to be loved. Eclogue 6. Silenus. My muse at first condescended to sport in Syracusan verse, nor has she blushed to inhabit the woods. When I would have sung of kings, and battles, Apollo pulled my ear, and admonished me thus, O Titurus, it becomes a shepherd to feed his fattening sheep and to sing an humble song. 
now I will meditate my rustic muse on a slender reed, for there will remain to you. O Varus! Those who desire to sing your praises, and to describe mournful wars. I do not sing unbidden subjects, yet, if anyone, if anyone captivated by love of verse will read these even. O Varus, our tamarisk shall sing of thee, every grove shall sing of thee, nor is any page more grateful to Apollo than that which has prefixed the name of Varus on it. Ye muses, proceed, Chromis and Nasilus, playful boys, beheld Silius lying in sleep in a cave, blown up as to his veins with yesterday's wine, as ever he is. His garlands, just now fallen from his head, lay at a distance, and his weighty tankard hung by its worn handle. Approaching, they cast over him chains from these wreaths, for often the old man had beguiled both with the hope of a song. Eagle adds herself as a companion, and came up to them alarmed by her approach, Eagle the most beautiful of the fountain nymphs, and paints his forehead and temples just now looking on them with bloody mulberries. He, laughing, at the deceit, says, Why do you bind these chains? Loose me, boys, it is enough to have been suffered to be beheld thus. Hear the songs which you wish, the songs are for you, there shall be another reward for her. At once he begins. Then indeed you might have seen both fawns and wild beasts to sport about him in regulated measure, then the hardy oaks to move their tops. Nor does the Parnassian rock so much rejoice Apollo, nor Codope and Ismarus so much admire Orpheus. For he sang, how the elements both of the earth, and of the air, and of the sea, and at the same time of the unmixed fire, had been united through the great void, how from these first principles are all the causes of things, how the tender globe of the world itself had become hardened. Then the soil had begun to become firm, and to set apart the waters in the sea, and to take the forms of things by degrees. And now how the lands were amazed when the new sun began to shine, and showers all. From the clouds being removed higher when first, the woods begin to arise. And when few animals once is through unknown mountains. He relates the east stones of Pyrrha, Saturn's kingdom, and the Caucasian birds, and the theft of Prometheus. He adjoins to these, in what fountain the sailors had called aloud on the lost Hylas, how every shore resounded Hylas, Hylas. And he consoles Persipte with the love of a snowy bullock happy, if herds never had been. Alas, unhappy maid, what madness possesses thee? The daughters of Prelus filled the fields with false lowings, but yet not any one followed so base cohabitation of flocks although she might fear the plough on her neck, and often she had sought for horns upon her smooth forehead. Alas, unhappy maid, now you wander upon the mountains. He, supporting his snowy side on the soft hyacinth, chews the pale herbs beneath the black oak, or follows another heifer in the great herd. Ye nymphs, ye Dictean nymphs, shut up, now shut up the lawns of the groves, if perhaps any wandering footsteps of the bullock, in the way, may offer themselves to my eyes. Perhaps other heifers will lead him to the Gortinian stalls, or captivated by the green grass, or pursuing the herds. Then he sings of the maid admiring the apples of the Hesperides, then how he surrounds the daughters of Phaeton with the moss of the bitter bark, and raises them tall alders from the ground. Then he sings. How one of the sisters Ed Callus wandering to the streams of Permessus on the Aeonian mountains. And how all the band of Apollo arose to the man, how Linus, the shepherd, ornamented as to his locks with flowers and bitter parsley, said these things to him in divine verse, the muses present to you these reeds, lo, take them, which before they gave to the old Ascrian, with which he was accustomed to lead out the hardy wild ashes from the mountains by singing. Let the origin of the Grinian grove be sung by you on these, that there be not any grove, in which Apollo may boast himself more. Why should I speak of what he said, either of Scylla the daughter of Nisus? Or of her whom, girt as to her snow-white waist with barking monsters, fame has handed down to have vexed the Julakian ships, and, in the deep whirlpool, alas, to have torn the frightened sailors with sea dogs? Or how he related that the limbs of Terius were changed? What festivals, what gifts Philomela bad prepared for him? With what swiftness besought the deserts? And with what wings the wretched prince flew above the palace formerly his own? He sung all these things, which joyful Eurotas heard, Apollo formerly having played them, and commanded the laurels to learn, the stricken veils re-echo them to the stars. Until the evening star coerced them to collect the sheep in the stables, and to count up their number, and proceeded in the sky unwillingly relinquishing the song. Eclogue 7. Melibius. Corydon. Thiasis. By chance Daphnis sat beneath a whispering oak, both Corydon and Thersis had driven their flocks together, Thersis his sheep, Corydon his goats, swelled out with milk, 
both in the prime of their age, both Arcadians. And equal to sing, and prepared to reply. Here the goat himself, the husband of the flock, had wandered from me, while I defend the tender myrtles from the cold, and I see darkness. When he beholds me opposite, he says, O oh, Melipsius, do you come here quickly, your goat is safe, and the kids, and, if you can loiter at all, rest beneath the shade. The bullocks themselves shall come through the meadows here to drink. Here Mincius has lined its green banks with the tender reed, and swarms of bees, resound from the sacred oak. What could I do? I had neither Alcip, nor Phyllis, who would shut up at home the lambs weaned from milk, and there was a great contest, Corridon with Thersize. Yet I have postponed my serious affairs to their sport. Therefore, both began to contend in alternate verses, the muses wished me to have commemorated alternate verses. Corridon rehearsed these, Thersize recited those in order. Ye Libethrian nymphs, our love. Either grant a song to me, such as you have granted to my cadres, he makes verses next to the verses of Apollo, either if we all cannot do it, here my tuneful pipe shall hang on the sacred pine. Ye Arcadian shepherds adorn your rising poet with ivy, that the sides of Codrus may be burst with envy. Oh, if he should praise me beyond my wish, bind your forehead with lady's glove, lest an evil tongue should hurt the future poet. Delia, little Mycon offers this head of a bristly boar to you, and the branching horns of a lusty stag. If this may have been appropriate, you shall stand out entire from smooth marble, binding your legs with crimson buskin. O oh Priapus, it is enough for you to expect a pail of milk and these cakes yearly, you are the keeper of a poor garden. Now we have made thee of marble for the time, but be thou of gold, if breeding shall supply the flock. O oh Galatea, daughter of Nereus, sweeter to me than the time of Hybla, more white than swans. More fair than white ivy when first the full-fed bulls shall seek the stalls. If any care of your Corridon possesses you, come. Nay, I may seem to you more bitter than Sardinian herbs, more rough man furs, meaner than rejected seaweed, if this day not now longer to me than a whole year. Ye full-fed bullocks, go home. Go, if there is any modesty. Here is a hearth and rich torches. Here is much fire always, and the posts are black with continual soot. Here we regard the cold of Boreas as much, as either the woe regard the number of the flock, or the headlong streams regard their banks. Ye mossy fountains, and grass softer than sleep, and the green arbute, which covers you with its thin shade, keep off the solstice from the flock, already the burning summer approaches, now the buds swell on the fruitful vine. The field is dried up the grass thirsts dying by the impurity of the air. Bacchus has envy his vine shadows from the hills. Every grove will be green by the coming of our Phyllis, and abundant Jupiter descends in a joyful shower. And the junipers, and the rough chestnuts remain, apples lie strewn everywhere, each one beneath its own tree, now all things laugh, but if fair Alexis should be absent from these mountains, you would see even the rivers dry. The field is dried up, the grass thirsts dying by the impurity of the air. Bacchus has envy his vine shadows from the hills. Every grove will be green by the coming of our Phyllis, an abundant Jupiter descends in a joyful shower. The poplar is most acceptable to Hercules, the vine to Bacchus. The myrtle to fair Venus. His own laurel to Apollo, Phyllis loves hazel while Phyllis shall love these, neither the myrtle nor the laurel of Phoebus shall excel the hazels. The ash is most beautiful in the woods, the pine in the gardens the poplar by the rivers, the fir in the lofty mountains, but if. Beautiful Lycidas, you shall revisit me oftener, the ash in the woods, the pine in the gardens shall yield to thee. I remember these things, and that thirst eyes conquered, contended in vain. From that time, Corridon, Corridon is for us. Eclogue 8. Pharmus Utria. Damon. Alphegeus. Let us sing the muse of the shepherds Damon and Alphosibos whom contending the heifer, unmindful of her grass, admired by whose song the lynxes stood amazed, and the rivers changed in their courses, rested. Let us sing the muse of Damon and Alphosibos. Do you assist me, whether now you pass over the rocks of great Timarvus, or coast along the shore of the Illyrian sea low, ever will that day be. When it will be allowed to me to extend your deeds. Lo, will it be, that it may be allowed to me to extend your verses, alone worthy of Sophocles' buskin i.e. Tragic style, through the whole globe? My commencement is from you, my muse shall end with you. 
receive my songs begun by your orders, and allow this ivy to creep amidst the victorious laurels around your temples. Scarcely had the cold shadow of night departed from the sky, when the dew is most grateful to the flock. On the tender grass, Damon leaning on his tapering olive, began thus. O Lucifer, arise, and going before, lead on the cheering day, while, deceived by the unworthy love of my bride, Nisa, I complain, and dying, yet in my last hour, I address the gods, although it has profited me nothing that they were witnesses. My pipe, begin me nalian verses with me. Mienelis always has both a tuneful grove, and singing pines, he always listens to the loves of the shepherds, and Pan, who first did not suffer his reeds to lie slothful. My pipe, begin Manalian verses with me. Nisa is yielded to Mopsus. What may we lovers not expect? Now griffins shall be yoked with horses, and in the following age, cowardly fallow deer shall come with dogs to the cups. O Mopsus, cut your new nuptial torches, a wife is let out for you. O husband, scatter nuts, Hesperus deserts Eda for you. My pipe, begin me Nalian verses with me. O united to a worthy man. While you despise all men, and while my pipe is hateful to you, and while my goats, and shaggy eyebrow, and long beard are hated by you, nor do you believe any one of the gods to care for mortal concerns. My pipe, begin me Nalian verses with me. I beheld you a little girl, gathering dewy quinces with your mother in our hedges, I was your guide. Then another year from the eleventh had overtaken me, now I could touch the brittle branches from the ground. How I gazed, how I wasted away, how the destructive delusion stole me away. My pipe, begin the alien verses with me. Now I know what love is, Ismarus, or Rodophy, or the most distant Garamantes bore him on the hard cliffs, a boy neither of our race, nor blood. My pipe, begin the alien verses with me. Cruel love has taught a mother to stain her hands in the blood of her sons. You, O oh mother, were cruel likewise, was the mother more cruel, or was the boy more wicked? The boy was wicked, you were cruel also. O oh mother! My pipe, begin me Nalian verses with me. Now also the wolf flies from the sheep of his own accord, the hardy oaks bear golden apples, the alder shall flower with narcissus, tamarisks perspire rich amber from their barks, and owls shall contend with swans, let titteris be Orpheus, Orpheus in the woods, Arion among, the dolphins. My pipe, begin me Nalian verses with me. All things may become even as in the midst of the sea. Ye woods, live. I shall be born headlong from the height of an airy mountain to the waves, accept this the last favor of your dying friend. My pipe. Cease. Now cease me Nalian verses. Damon uttered these words, ye Pyrian muses. Say, what Alpheza Boas replied. All men cannot do all things. Bring out water and bind these altars with a soft fillet and burn rich vervain and male frankincense that I may try to pervert the sound senses of my wife by magic sacrifices. Nothing except charms are wanting here, my charms lead, lead doffness from the city home. Charms even can draw down the moon from heaven, Circe changed the companions of Ulysses by charms, the cold snake in the meadows is burst by charming. My charms lead, lead doffness from the city home. First I surround for thee these three thread variegated with a triple hue and lead thy image thrice around these altars. The god rejoices in an unequal number. My charms lead, lead Daphnia from the city home. Amaryllis, bind three colors in three knots. O Amaryllis, bind them now and say I bind the chains of Venus. My charms lead, lead Daphnis from the city home. As this clay hardens and as this wax melts. By one in the same arc. Thus Daphnis by my love. Scatter the cake and burn brittle laurels with pitch. Cruel Daphnis burns me, I burn this laurel upon Daphnis. My charms lend lead Daphnis from the city home. May such love possess Daphnis as when a heifer weaned with seeking the bull through the groves and lofty forests, abandoned she lies down on the green grass near a river of water, nor remembers to depart late at night. Let such love possess Daphnis. Nor let it be my care to heal him. My charms lead, lead Daphnis from the city home. The faithless swain formerly left these clothes to me, the dear pledges of himself, which now I commit to you, O earth in the entrance itself, these pledges owe Daphnis to me. My charms lead, lead Daphnis from the city home. Moeris himself has given to me these herbs and these poisons gathered in Pontus, many such grow in Pontus. I have seen Moeris often become a wolf by them and hide himself in the woods often to call forth souls from the deep tombs and to lead off the growing harvests to another place. 
My charms lead, lead doffness from the city home. Amaryllis, bring the ashes out and cast them over your head into a flowing stream. Do not look back. I will attack Daphnis with them. He nothing cares for the gods. He cares nothing for my charms. My charms lead, lead Daphnis from the city home. Behold, the ashes itself has seized the altars with tremulous flames spontaneously. While I delay to bear them off, may it be for good. Truly there is here I know not what, and the dog Hylax barks in the entrance. Do we believe it? Or do those who love themselves feign dreams to themselves? My charms. Cease now cease, Daphnis comes from the city. Eclogue 9. Lycidas. Mori. Moris, where do your feet bear you? Whether into the city where the way leads? O Lycidas, living have we come to this, that a strange possessor of my little field should say, which never. Had we feared, these are mine, ye ancient husbandmen. Remove, now conquered, sad, since chance upturns everything, we send these kids to him, which I pray may not turn out well. Truly, indeed, I had heard that your Manalkas had saved all the tract by his verses, where the hills begin to withdraw themselves, and to depress their height by a gentle declension, even to the water, and the tops of the old beach now broken. You had heard it. And the report was so, but, O Lycidas, our verses prevail as much amid martial weapons, as they say Chanyan doves do, the eagle approaching, but unless the Iloman raven had admonished me before from the hollow oak, to lay aside new controversies, by any means, neither this year Moeris, nor Manalcus himself, had now been alive. Alas! Can so great wickedness fall to any one? Alas! Manalcus, your consolation was almost taken from us at the same time with yourself. Who would have sung the nymphs? Who bad strewn the ground with flowering herbs, or had overspread the fountains with a verdant shade? Or the songs which silently I stole from you lately, when you withdrew yourself to Amaryllis, our daring? O oh, Titurus, feed my goats, until I return, the way is short, and, Titurus, drive them when fed to drink, and, while driving, beware not to encounter the he-goat, he strikes with his horn. Rather these which ye sang to Varus, nor yet are they finished. O Varus, the singing swan shall bear your name on height of the stars, provided Mantua may remain to us. Mantua, alas I too near the wretched Cremoni. Thus may your swarms escape Cernian yew trees, thus may your heifers fed upon Cytisus, swell out their udders. Begin, if you have anything. Likewise the muses have made me a poet, and there are to me verses, the shepherds also call me a poet. But I do not confide in them for as yet I seem losing things worthy neither of Varus, nor of China, but as a goose, to hiss among the tuneful swans. Indeed I do that, and, O Lycerlas, do you in silence revolve it with me? If I can remember it. Nor. Is it a degraded song? Come here, O Galatea. What sport is there among the waves? Here is blooming spring, here the earth pours forth various flowers around the rivers, here the white poplar hangs over the cave and the slender vines interweave shades. Come here, suffer the mad waves that they strike the shore. What is this which I had heard you alone singing beneath the clear night? I remember the numbers, if I could retain the words. O oh, Daphnis, why do you look upon the ancient rising of the constellations? Behold the star of Dionysian Caesar has proceeded, the star by which the cornfields rejoice in the fruits and by which the grape derives its color on the sunny hills. O oh, Daphnis, plant your pear trees your offspring shall pluck your fruit. Time bears off a things, the mind even. I remember myself when a child often to have spent long days in singing. Now so many songs are forgotten by me now, the voice itself also has escaped Moeris, the wolves first beheld Moeris. But yet Manalkas will relate these things to you often enough. You draw out my loves for a long time in making excuses. And now behold all the sea spread out is still for you, and all the airs of windy murmuring have ceased. Thus here is for us an intermediate way, for the tomb of Bienna begins to appear. Here where the farmers strip the thick leaves, here, O oh Morris, let us sing, here place your kids. Yet let us come to the city. Or if we dread lest night should collect rain first, although we should go singing thus, the way will be less tedious. As we go singing, I will relieve you of this burden. Oh boy, cease to speak more, and let us do what now presses us. We shall sing songs better then. When he has come. Eclogue 10. Gallus. Arithus a yield this last labor to me a few songs are to be sung to my callus, but which Lycoris herself may read. 
Who will deny verses to Callus? Thus may bitter Doris not intermingle her wave with you, when you glide beneath the Sicilian billows. Begin, let us sing the anxious loves of Gallus, while the flat, nosed goats crop the tender shrubbery. We sing not to the deaf, the woods respond to all. What groves, or what lawns detained you, ye maiden naiads, when Gallus perished by unworthy love? For neither did he heights of Parnassus, for neither did any heights of Pindus, nor of Aeonian Aganet cause delay to you. Even the laurels, even the tamarisks mourned him. Also the pine bearing Menelus, and the rocks of the cold Lycius, mourned him lying beneath a lonely rock. And the sheep stand around, nor are they ashamed of us, nor be thou ashamed of thy flock, O divine poet and fair Adonis fed sheep by the rivers. And the shepherd came. The slow herdsman came, Manalka's moist from the wintry mast came. All ask, whence is to you this love? Apollo came, he said, O Gallus, why are you mad? Lycoris your care has followed another both through the snows, and through the dreadful camp. And Sylvanus came, with the rustic honours of his head, shaking the flowering fennels and large lilies. Pan the god of Arcadia came, whom we have seen, blushing with the bloody berries of the elder, and Vermilion. And he says, what will be the limit of our grief? Love does not regard such things. Neither is cruel love satisfied by tears, nor is grass by rivers, nor are bees satisfied with citrus, nor goats with leaves. But he mournful, says, nevertheless, ye Arcadians, ye shall sing these things on your mountains, ye Arcadians alone skilled to sing. Oh how gently then will my bones rest if hereafter your pipe will declare my loves. And I wish I had been one of you, and either a keeper of your flock, or a vintager of the ripe grape. Truly, whether there should be to me Phyllis or Amintas, or any other flame, what then, if Amintas is brown? And violets are black, and hyacinths are black, thus would have reclined with me among the willows beneath the slender vine, Phyllis would have gathered garlands with me, Amintas would have sung. Here are cold fountains. Here are soft meadows. O oh, Lycoris, here is a grove, here I might consume with you my life itself. Now maddening love confines me to the arms of direful Mars, amidst darts, and hostile foes. Thou, far off from thy country, let me not believe it, beholdest only alpine snow and the rigours of the Rhine. Ah, cruel maid! Alone without me, ah, let not the colds injure thee. Ah, let not the rough ice cut thy tender feet. I will go, and attune songs on the reed of the Sicilian shepherd, which are composed by me Chalcidican, elegiac, verse. It is determined, that I had rather suffer in the woods, among the dens of wild beasts, and carve moves on the tender trees, they shall grow, so my loves, you shall increase. In the meantime I will range meanless with nymphs mingled in my train, or I will hunt the savage boars. Not cold shall forbid me to encircle Parthenian lawns with dogs now I seem to myself to go through rocks, and sounding groves. It pleases me to hurl Sidonian darts from the Parthian bow. As if these things may be a medicine of my maddening love, or that God can learn to become gentle by the misfortunes of men. Now again neither the nymphs of the groves, nor songs themselves please us, again ye woods yourselves give place to my despair. Our labours cannot change him. Not if even we should drink the Hebrus in the midst of colds, and undergo the Scythonian snows of the stormy winter, nor if, when the dying bark dries up on the lofty elm, we should tend the sheep of the Ethiopians beneath the constellation of the crab. Love conquers all things, and let us yield to love. Ye divine muses, it shall be enough for your poet to have sung these songs while he sits and interweaves a basket with the slender bulrush. You shall make these very important to Callus, to Callus, whose love increases to me as much in an hour, as the green alder raises itself in the early spring. Let us rise, the shade is wont to be oppressive to singers, the shade of the juniper is oppressive, shades injure also the fruits. Ye goats, well fed, go home go, the evening star approaches.